on today's episode, we're gonna listen to this guy sit down and talk to the camera while he's rebuilding these vent windows on Krusty. That sounds like something you wanna watch. Uh, stick around and hope you enjoy. Thank you. Russell talks. <laughs> You're good to listen to him talk now. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Uh, here a little early and can't just sit around and do nothing. So I'm just gonna sit here and build these vent windows, at least start, the putting the rubber in is the hardest part. So I'm just gonna let this roll and put it together and ramble on maybe. So, I just like to meld out and do my thing. It's uh, relaxing sometimes. Not thinking, but then I wind up thinking. Just think this corner's the worst. If I could just get that in there on one side. I bet some people got some methods for this too. I've watched a couple YouTube videos on when I did the last ones. And I don't remember having this much trouble in the corner. I'm gonna get a little, I tried this clamp yesterday. I'm gonna get a little C clamp. I got this one. If you don't ever have a, like if you're draining a radiator or something, and don't have a hose clamp, or not a hose clamp, but a, a hose plug to like cap, like when you unhook a line, like little lines, like transmission lines, or you're changing anything, you can make a little cap with just a little piece of rubber hose and a C-clamp or a pair of vice grips or pick your poison. We actually found a tool that works for that, but that's what that is and it's just been sitting around. But I'm gonna try to take this C-clamp and get this corner. And if I can get one side in all the way, I can then be able to work the other side in. And it should, you should be able to do that. And I didn't get my dang C-clamp big enough. I'm a fool. I would use some vice grips. I don't want to tear this up, this rubber, as much as possible. That section's really kind of already in. Good. Using plastic tools here because I don't want to mess up the rubber. The clamp doesn't have too much pressure on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was good. Stay. Uh-huh. Now something happened. What about this other side? Is he in there? Oh yeah, buddy. That does it, that does it, that does it. Let's leave that there for a second and work some more of this. See, now it easily gets that one side in. If you can get that one side in and you're just working that other side, it makes things a lot easier. Come on, buddy, do it for me. Boom. There it goes. Now we're cooking, buddy. We are cooking. I'm gonna have to break down and give me some dang reading glasses. Because I can't see anything up close anymore, which is ridiculous. 
just happened out of nowhere. And now they my eye doctor said, <clears throat> he said, uh, well you can get, you can get a uh, bifocal contacts, cause I have to wear contacts. Uh, cause I can't see anything from far away, but that's been that way the bulk of my life. I'm used to that. It's a uh, simple, it's a simple thing. It's no, there's no transition for me, but he, my bifocal contacts do not sound nice at all. Or no, that's not even what they want to do. No, no, no. They want me to wear a contact in one eye that lets me see far away and a contact in the other eye that lets me see up close. That sounds crazy. Like have, everybody who's worn contacts has, uh, has uh, been through that stage where they only had one contact in. And that is horrible. And when I was young, I could do it. I could get used to it because I was a cheapskate and a dirt bag and didn't really care. Uh, I'd rather spend my money on some wheels or something. That's kind of how I rolled back then. You know, some new speakers or something. Uh, but I can't imagine the depth perception problem that it would pose nowadays for me. I don't want to do that. I could do some, they have those hidden line bifocal glasses, but I don't like wearing glasses all the time because they're just uh, kind of a pain. They're restricting. They get dirty so easy can't see nothing, I'm always wiping them off. And I don't have a clean thing, so they're getting scratched up. Come on, bro, you were going so good. Now you're hanging up on me, what's happening here? Hmm. I'm scared to take this off, but I need to. Let's make sure we're in everywhere else down here. Yeah, that all looks good. That looks good. It's basically off anyway. Wasn't even really doing much. This has got a line up here for your opener, your hinge. All right, that side's all in. Wonder why it's tight right there. It's a pain sometimes. That's why my fingers. I'm gonna be one of those old guys with bad hands from doing stuff like this. I talked to an old guy the other day. He couldn't even grip anything anymore because he'd worked with his hands so much. Yeah, buddy, there you go. And I know, I know what's in for me. I promise you that. I pay attention to people older than me more than ever nowadays. <clears throat> I don't really have to pay attention to the young people, you know, like, I've done a lot of that stuff. I partied, man, I did my thing. But the old folks, that's what's coming for you. They've done it all already. Imagine living 80 years, 80 years. I've lived 40, 43 years. Imagine 80 years. Jesus. That's a long time, man. I feel like I've lived a long life already. And to double it, it's a daunting thought, honestly, for me. 
It's because life is stressful. And a lot of that stress is in our heads, I know that. I know that. But it's hard to deal with sometimes. Stress. And the mat. I feel like though you get better with age at managing stress. Managing thought. Managing time delegation. That's a that's a kicker right there is delegating your time properly. It's hard to do. Cause even sometimes when I'm air quotes working, I'm thinking about working, you know what I mean? I'm thinking about projects and I, that's, I overthink them all anyway, but I like daydreaming about them. It's uh, daydreaming's good in the aspect if you're like using it to think about it artistically to get an idea, but daydreaming's bad to only do that and not execute. And that's the, uh, <clears throat> that sometimes that's a problem because it's, uh, it's easy to get lost in daydreams. It's easy for me to get lost in my daydreams. And, shit, come on, bro. I uh, like doing the work though. It is peaceful. Just get, once you finally get down to it and you get in a rhythm and you kind of problem solve along the way, that's part of the fun part about the work. And that if you can get past the, the daydreaming stage and start doing the work, you find that you, you get to problem solve along the way, which is what part of my daydream is anyway, is the problem solving. I don't always retain the knowledge of how to do something. I don't know why, but I think about it while I'm doing it in a manner that is almost analytical of the thing I'm doing. That's it. I'm not, I wouldn't, I'm not trying to say I'm a good thought. I'm not a no thought leader at all, bro. Just telling you my process, I guess. Just think about well, this needs to go here, and this needs to go here. Why well, this go in here? What is what's going to happen if I do this? What's this going to change over here if I do that? But then there's another trap because then you'll get into working on something, and you'll sometimes it pays to think about something for a long time, and sometimes you're overthinking something simple should just do it like you know you know how to make that bracket you know you know how to make that bracket you've done it before but you're trying to reinvent the wheel with the bracket and it ruins the whole thing because you waste your time you waste your time nowadays it's even easier to do that because there's some awesome people out there as far as uh oh, let's try that um builders and fabricators and welders. I mean, you know, we all know the, the best of the best in every trade now. Like every trade, like you look at, I watch woodworking videos and welders and fabricators and painters and body men and, you know, Chase watches the, uh, business people and, there, you, 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 you know who the best are now. You know who the best are, so it's hard not to compare yourself or compare everything you do to the best. And the internet's a cruel place. I don't really like it. I like the entertainment side of the internet and the knowledge side of the internet, but the, the internet's a terrible place. There's so many bad people so many negative, like, I don't want to be the most negative person I know. Oh, that went in there nicely. Pop, it's nice when you feel it pop. Um, I try to be positive, but sometimes I'm negative, man. It's, it's a curse. It's 
definitely a curse. But the internet is like, oh man, it's just feeding you negativity. And the negati negativity sticks more than the positivity for some reason. <clears throat> yeah, buddy. That was the better tool in this situation for sure. Um, shit. I, I don't even know. Oh, I know what I was saying. You, you know who the baddest people are. Like, especially being from a small town, people sit, people call you good, you know? And it's easy to get a big head and think you're the best. You know, there's a lot of them. That, I guess it's that big fish, small pond syndrome who are good in their pond, but in the grand scheme of things, now we know who's the real good ones. So, it's, uh, I can't, I don't get too caught up in, well, I, I do get caught up actually in the, the ability side of it for me because I know what good really is. You know what I'm saying? And then the internet, half of these people have just seen people that are good on the internet and think that they're good because they can talk about it. And they probably don't hold a candle to even semi-good people. I know what the good guys do. I know who the best are. And a lot of, a lot of the different genres of cars and fabricating and building dude the best are awesome i mean think about the just everybody who's out there racing around in their car y'all know ken block can drive you know it and you compare all of your skills to him or somebody else like him you know max verstappen we all wish we could be max verstappen so it's hard to be okay with what you are like you just gotta try to do your best. Because unless you dedicate at an early age too nowadays, because there's people doing it earlier and earlier and being better earlier. And so dedicate at an early age to what you wanna be the best at. And that's a hard thing to do too if you enjoy a lot of stuff. Dang, man. Enjoying a bunch of things is a killer sometimes. Because you can't, you can't do a whole bunch of things and be real good. That's a, I, I, it's hard anyway. I know there's some, there's some savants out there that are just, I call them gods of their crafts. This thing needs to come down, that's killing me. That's killing me. I need, I need some slack that way. Cause it's, uh, it's into that thing right there. Yeah, there's people that are good at a lot of things. Like, you know, Bo Jackson, he did football and baseball. So did Dion. Uh, they're good at, they're good at more than one thing. Um, I'm sure there's like Joe Rogan. He's a good commentator. He's a good comedian. I don't really watch that much comedy. Uh, he uh, evidently is a good mixed martial arts fighter, jujitsu person. I mean, he's definitely, he is definitely uh, doing a lot of stuff at a high level. <laughs> That's the best way to say it. You can't deny that. And you see a lot of people that do a lot of stuff at a high level. And they're good at a lot of things, but some of these trades, fabricators, uh, sheet metal guys, body men, uh, airbrushing guys, painters, you know, like there's some painters out there. They awesome, man. They are awesome. 
and there is no denying it. There's builders and fabricators out there that put other people to shame. So if you want to be that, you better get started. If not, you wind up, if you're interested in a lot of things, you become a jack of all trades. Uh, it's kind of a curse. I mean, you can get a lot of stuff done, you know. Something, it's just, it's not at the level that you wish it would be. That's the difference. That's the difference is it's a middle of the road kind of person sometimes. I, it's, and that comes back to your hustle, I would think. Like how good is your hustle? Because if you're a jack of all trades and your hustle's good, you could probably kill it. I uh, just don't have the hustle. I guess when it comes to that, I don't like selling. I don't like business, honestly. I really don't. It is not pleasurable. It is just one more stress to a busy mind. Business is, is stressful to me. And I know there's all kinds of bad some bitches out there in business. We're right back to that. You know, I'm, bro, I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you got it. But I had to choose something, something. Um, and it, it was that thing when I was young. I was into cars. I was into trucks and cars, man. Mini trucks and lowriders was my thing. Speaking of awesome, that is uh, probably the best, like when we're talking about comparing ourselves to people, that guy is the best fabricator in our area. He builds the most awesome stuff ever. The most awesome stuff ever. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> and he barely has a social media presence. Um, He's not that person. They do have a Facebook page and they'll post up some pictures from time to time. But if he was, if he was uh, doing social media along with everything he does, he'd have a TV show already. Cause he's that kind of good. He's, he's good. He's, he's awesome, bro. He is awesome. I mean, it's weld porn out there. It fab porn and he does it all. He does like he took jack of all trades to the top level because he does everything on these cars from top to bottom. He is awesome. He and he's in this area, you know, he's just not nobody knows about that guy. Nobody like unless you're a car guy, you don't you you don't know how awesome he is. He is <laughs> he is awesome. And I need to call him back. As soon as I finish doing this, it'd be the right thing to do. But didn't want to answer right then. I've been thinking about changing my phone number because uh, the phone is such a distraction. I, I don't like being able to be reached all the time. Like I need to, I, I, the phone is awesome because I have a family and I have some close friends and for them, I'll always have a phone. But the phone is frustrating because I, sometimes I don't need to be distracted with so much, so much. It's so much distraction. I just wanna, like, I mean, I kind of feel like I'm just flowing through this right now. I've reached a difficult part of this stage. Right behind this clip here is gonna be nice and fun. Give it a little lubrication with some soppy water. And uh, let's see, this will be the hardest part. Are you gonna push in there? No, I've been fighting this hard. I put a little bit on there, maybe I didn't put enough. That sucker went in there. Ah, dang. 
Maybe it didn't go all the way, though. Yeah, it hadn't gone all the way. We're going to make it go all the way. Yeah, I think that did it. That's nice. Let's go ahead and put a little more on there. Yeah, that'll do it. Let's pop that up a few times and let it get down in that crack. Uh, I was talking about my phone, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't like being able to be reached all the time. I just want to need freedom I need uh, that's why I'll just go home and stand outside like a crazy person <laughs> and just stand there just stand there and stare into space just uh, have a little clarity and I can't just I can't uh, it seems like it's um, all day like I can't imagine having a business or uh, like Chase, y'all, man. Chase is busy. Chase is a busy guy. He, he, he handled, he, he delegates a lot of things and handles a lot of stuff all at one time, you know. So, dang, man, I don't have that. I just don't have it. And I just, I can't, I'm sorry if you're a life coach and you say I could. I just don't, I don't want that stress in my life, man. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much stress. I need, I need clarity. I need, that's one of the best things about fishing is I normally fish alone. And it's awesome, man. It is awesome. Because you, when you're throwing baits, like it, it, can, it, can, it becomes pretty methodical and sometimes I'm not really trying to, I mean, I always want to catch a fish. I always do. I always want to catch a fish. And this is probably a hindrance to me and my fishing ability. I don't care because just being out there in that world, in that environment, in that peace, I fish a small lake, not real busy, got a lot of stumps in it. So there's, even if it is busy, there's not a lot of room for recreational boat traffic and it's so nice man it's so peaceful so peaceful just me and me that's it nobody else no distractions it's bad cell phone signal out there it's uh, awesome it's if there's therapy that's definitely some of it Definitely, uh, and I need that. I need that freedom, space. I got my dang boat for sale because it's the right thing to do financially right now. That doesn't mean I won't have a boat. And I've got a real nice boat right now, a nice to me. You know, and there's always somebody got something nicer. I know. But it's nice to me, and it's nice to a lot of people, and I know that. And it's it, it it's nice, but I will admit, I had just as much fun fishing, actually standing there on the front of the boat, throwing that lure, pulling it back, catching a fish, even in that aluminum boat. That little 17-foot crappie pro and knowing the things I know now, I could rig out that little crappie pro, build some decks for it, and make it even nicer, and be just as happy. An Ultrex on that thing would have changed everything. See, when I had that crappie pro, it only had a dang regular old trolling motor, and they really didn't have spot lock then. So in the wind, that little boat was hard to fish in. It definitely was. If I was fishing a deep point in the wind in that boat, I had, an, I had a traditional anchor. 
and I would throw me out a long anchor line and post up on a spot and fish it. And then I'd pull that anchor up and I'd use my trolling mover and move a little further down off that point, throw that anchor out, fish that spot. That was my spot lock. But I caught fish like that, you know, and I didn't kill my trolling motor and have to fight the wind. So I made it work, definitely made it work. And it didn't cost near the money. And I still got to do what I wanted to do, is go stand out there on the front of that boat and get just some thought clarity. Just a little bit. What is happening? This end is killing me. I might need to clamp again. That's what I miss. Or I would miss. That's my therapy. That's my clarity away from my phone and the bustle. Did that just happen? That went in there. Almost. Hot dang. Hot dang. That sucker. Almost. Come on. Get in there. <sighs> I think that other side is gonna help hold that. Once I put the side piece on here. Hot dog, that's the only bad part right there. That other one I did was the same way. Same way, but I think we're gonna let the heat. Cause this has gotta be there. And that could be the difference in one manufacturer's part over another manufacturer. Yeah, that wasn't bad. And I think once I get, once I rivet this piece, this arm on here, then I can put a little more pressure on that, make sure it's in there good right there at that point. Look at there. It's got a little, it's a little overlapped right here and a little gap right here. The other one I did was that way too. It, uh, but it looks better now, so I think I'm gonna let the sun do a little work on this rubber and the pressure of that glass being in there. And maybe once I put that other frame on there, I'll try to massage it down a little bit and see if it'll stay. Cause that may be it. I may need to get in at this top a little better and then it should lock in underneath there somehow with that pressure. But that'll do it. Um, if you listen to me ramble this whole time, Thank you. Catch y'all on the flip side. I'm gonna call this dude back.